Can Oklahoma State defeat Kansas State? Arizona upset Utah. Let's get the Big 12 squad together. Intro again. You're talking ball with the Big 12 squad. From Oklahoma State to Utah, from Kansas State to BYU, from Houston to Texas Tech, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big 12 weekend. Buckle up. It's the Big 12 squad, and we have a seat for you. No her feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up. You're part of the Big 12 squad. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome into the Big 12 squad. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and join us as we get ready for another wild week across the Big 12. Uh, Yes, let's reference the biggest storyline from this weekend, maybe the ugliest storyline from the weekend. Uh, I spent a little too much time at the beach, got more burnt than the TCU secondary. 66 points to SMU. Baylor loses on a Hail Mary. Shadur Sanders finds a way to get it done. One lucky Kansas State fan, lucky, has to put a beefy... Five layer burrito from uh, Taco Bell, right where the sun in the in the butt is. The and BYU even made reference to it. Um, Texas Tech could be good again, maybe. And our Arizona representative just didn't show. Arizona State, I should say, just didn't show up because of that. We have Mountaineer Paul. West Virginia gets in the win category. Parker Ainsworth of Locked On Cougs is somehow still hosting a football podcast. Basketball is in two months. Kevin Borba of Locked On Buffs. Cody Stovall of Oklahoma State. Locked On Oklahoma State is uh, red around the eyes. The tears. A lot of tears after the Utah loss. Speaking of, JT Wister still of Locked On Utes. Jay Catch of Locked On BYU Cougars is eating a beefy five-layer burrito. Cam Stewart of Locked On Baylor uh, exists. And Chris Level of Locked On Texas Tech. Let's go to... Um, All right, but time uh, out. I, I got to know... We oh, got to no. be sure where that burrito came from, uh, Jake. Uh, there's there's oh, danger uh, here. Uh, uh, where did that burrito? Let's put it this way. I was at BYU football practice driving home for this show and decided, you know what? There's Taco Bell down the, down the street from my house. Grab a beefy five-layer burrito. We're going to enjoy while the show goes we, on. We know where it's going. <laughs> I mean, we know where it's going. Do you freeze it? How strategically do you do you unfold it? And a lot I of don't, questions. I don't, I don't know how much strategy you want to get into i would think it's more malleable not frozen but that's not you know. interesting <laughs> i heard the cops have confiscated a lot of something that could help that jake so, <laughs> just a thought just a thought and uh, a lot of strategy going into um oh man I, there's so many places to start here a lot of strategy going into the bb5 layer burrito not a lot of strategy in cameron stewart's locked on baylor's uh Cigar. What was it? Victory cigar was that the would be play. A victory cigar, of course. We all needed to know that. We needed to hear that after the game. I'm, I'm, I'm one who definitely slept better after hearing the name of the effing play was called Victory Cigar. Yeah, I love that. And That's guys went the wrong way. We, we, we yeah, just like, we showed it to him, and we, we, yeah, we just, yeah, went the wrong way. Yeah, a little rush nine. Let's send nine, boys. This Hail Mary's not going the no way. Is victory for nobody. <laughs> it lost uh, a game for one and sent the game into overtime for the other. I couldn't. Uh, JT Wester still have locked on Utes. I've buried the lead long enough. We're three and a half minutes into the show, and somehow you've stayed silent at this point. A miracle. Utah beats Oklahoma State at Oklahoma State with the worst of the two Wilsons at quarterback. Though a pretty good, like the guy, the kid won the game. Utah is undisputably the best team in the Big 12. Yeah, I do feel like Utah proved that yet again this week. And yes, I didn't feel the need to jump in yet because I felt like Utah's play Mm, this weekend spoke volumes for a lot of people on this panel. Chris, you almost had that prediction last week of all the road teams winning, but you forgot to count on good old Kyle Whittingham coming through. Backup quarterback doesn't matter. Quarterback controversy always because of health. But Utah dominated the line of scrimmage. And how about that time of possession? 42 to 17 minutes, the difference. Alan Bowman was looking nice, and then they ended up going into this game, and he ends the game being benched at halftime, comes back in, and either way, Oklahoma State wasn't able to get it done, and Utah looking extremely strong. I got to tell you, man, Utah is one of the most unlikable bunches of folks, and JT, you're not helping that. I, I mean, I was five of six, but I'd rather drink turpentine and piss on a brush fire than root for the Utes the rest of the way, man. I'm just what do they do in Lubbock? How do these one-liners even happen? Are you just all bored and sitting just, around putting words I'm just, together? I'm just telling you. I, that, that's where I'm at. That's you're where I'm you're telling there. me what? Wait, what are me, you I'm just kidding. telling me, Chris? You're JT, not telling I'm me kidding. anything. Welcome to the league. Congrats on the win in Stillwater. Cody, you let me down, man. I was almost got, there. Almost. They've got no Taco Bells in Lubbock. He's got to be creative. That's They that's do. The have, they, have, they, have, they have Taco Villa, Taco Bell, Roses. <laughs> Chris is like, I will be damned if you say there's not a Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't besmirch. 
Joe Bisperts, I, you know, Mexican food, uh, fast food joints in Lubbock, Texas. I will not yeah. allow it. Why would Jose Grande Bisperts live mine? Taco right. Bell. Oh, my gosh. Um, Kevin Borba, you're on the other side of that Hail Mary. Cody Stovall from Locked On Oklahoma State also hasn't said a word. A miracle on this show. <laughs> this is unbelievable. We buried yeah. JP and Cody. Cody, uh, you know, before we get to Borba and his Hail Mary, Borba, sit. Uh, Cody Stovall, are you still sad? Uh, I'm devastated, dude. Not oh. okay. Not only did we oh. lose, but you know, losing in Stillwater doesn't happen all that often. It's not a typical trend. But since we're doing things that are trending, I will say that um, everybody's heard of this fun thing called Hawk Two Wall. We just got Hawk Utah in our own flipping stadium. <laughs> Points got it. I thought he was going to get you a BP5 layer burrito again. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to cut it in post. We're going to have to write a letter. People are going to be screaming about that one. This is the most PG-13 <laughs> episode I've ever been a part of. <laughs> uh, Kevin Borba, up it. Find a way to, to up it. You're Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, Hail Mary. You've won the football game. The victory, the victory cigar is yours. Yeah, I think that was. I'm not going to go any. I'm not going to talk about Taco Bell or Hawk Tua or lotion bottles or whatever. I think I'm yeah, just going to talk about. I think I'm just going to talk about what happened. I think Colorado got bailed out by Dave Aranda overthinking things way too much. Um, they triple team Travis Hunter and it didn't work out. Uh, Colorado has four. Or, but can we put in context? They triple team Travis Hunter and rushed five. <laughs> just like, you know what? Yeah. Every other receiver, you guys just be open. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, a bold strategy, even bolder strategy to release the name of the <laughs> of the play. I don't think you could have like gotten that information out of me if my life depended on it. I probably would have just said that's a normal play that we run. Don't don't think I would have revealed the name, but hey, it was a big win for Colorado and hope they could keep it going. Otherwise, I mean Cam's suffering would be for nothing. The I lotion, understand. The lotion bottles helped a lot. Let me tell you. <laughs> after Saturday night, man, yeah, big time. There are a lot of I people understand. have to talk to their ecclesiastical leaders after this episode. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is hey, only barely like, BYU appropriate. Yeah, JT. Yes, really quick is not usually in your vernacular, but go. I understand the Dave Aranda slander, but at the end of the day, I still feel like players have to make plays, right? Make the field goal. And yes, they sent pressure, but the one linebacker they lined up on the outside, if he comes from the correct angle, Shador doesn't even get to roll out, not to mention the Hail Mary's unrealistically going downfield. I still feel like it comes down to players' execution. We don't even mention fumbling on the one-yard line yet. I understand Dave Aranda made mistakes, but I still think players have to ex execute in that situation more than anything. I think we were all dead by the time the, <laughs> yeah. the fumble at the goal line happened. It's yeah. been blocked out we, entirely. We yeah. Colorado had two Hail Marys that worked. The, the first one just wasn't oh, yeah. screwed. Yeah. yeah. You have yeah. to take into consideration that something was going wrong there where there was not an adjustment made. So I get like the other stuff. It's the but... defensive back not playing the ball well both times. I just don't yeah, get rushing but... five. I just don't get it. <laughs> I know. Okay. I know. Yeah. I don't I I've actually heard a decent explanation, Byler. but. Hey, Cam, can you just keep the defense doing what it's doing? What oh, BYU oh, oh. Just ask for a friend. Take. 31 points. <laughs> What's Colorado. weird is I was like so ready, so ready to be like, this is Baylor's defense. It's here. For most of the game, it played pretty well. I mean, that doesn't matter when you give up 31 in regulation and lose. But uh, anyway, I, I'm just bummed to not see Gary Bohannon this weekend. I'm really <laughs> bummed to not see that, Jake. He was in, uh, he was in classes with me, with me. Oh. And I'm using hair loss treatment, and he's still playing college football. <laughs> he'll be on the he'll be on the sideline looking pretty. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> we love we love sending our former starting quarterbacks to the state of Utah to just sit on the bench. We, we've got a nice thing going with that. Charlie Brewer Charlie reference Brewer. I didn't see coming in segment You know I'm a Charlie one. Brewer guy, man. Charlie Brewer guy. Coming. Hey, coming up on the Big 12 Texas squad, Brewer. is West Virginia good now? Is Texas Tech Good now is Colorado good now. There are a couple of Big 12 schools that all of a sudden, after a couple of early losses, might not suck. This is the Locked On Big 12 squad. Don't go anywhere. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one spot to enhance your sports viewing experience this football season. And NFL fans can start the season big with a return from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you think the Jaguars might come back and beat the Browns when they're playing a football game. You can actually live bet and check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get to start with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's right. Place a $5 bet 
you get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed from FanDuel. And go bet on the Big 12 right now this week. You think Colorado will cover 15 at UCF? Bet on it at FanDuel.com. Visit FanDuel.com, the official sports partner and America's number one sports book with Locked On today. It is week five in Big 12 play this week, and Oklahoma State plays at Kansas State. BYU goes to Baylor. TCU and Kansas square off. Colorado has a shot to, as 14.5-point underdogs, upset UCF on the road. Iowa State, Houston, Cincinnati, Texas Tech, Arizona, Utah. Let's get to those who might actually be good now. Mountaineer, Paul, we'll start with you. Is uh, is West Virginia? You've got Garrett Green, which apparently is the formula to go two and two, but be actually good now. Is West Virginia magically good? I think we took a step. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's tough. It's really tough because we we held we held Kansas in check, 184 passing yards. You can win with that. But then when I go to Pro Football Focus and look, every single corner on the West Virginia back end scored a 59 or under. So it was because of the pass rush, obviously, that those guys were looking better than they really were. It's still a major issue. It's going to be a major issue. We see Arizona, Kansas State, Iowa State, Oklahoma State all in a row. The next four games in a row, we're going to find out real quick just how good this Mountaineer team is. I think our offense can hang with just about anybody. Um, And, and, uh, you know, we have a really, really good defensive line and linebacking core, but the back end is just as bad as I've seen it. So I think it's a yes and a no. We do have Garrett Green, and we're happy to have him. But uh, I don't know. We're going to find out. I know that for sure. we got a bye week, very much needed, a lot of injuries. So we'll find out. Come on, say it, Paul, like you mean it. We got Garrett Green and you don't. Say it. <laughs> I, I know Green. you got one in yeah. you, man. Come on. Let it loose. <laughs> I mean, bow up. Garrett Green. We got Garrett Green and you don't. Anybody else? Yeah. Say it yeah. like Garrett Green says it in the mirror every morning. Because you know Garrett Green says that exact same sentence very Wait a proudly. Second. Oh, oh, yeah. Is that Garrett Parker Ainsworth? Hey, hey, hey. Green wakes up every day to piss And you have for. Donovan Smith and we don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, Parker. Garrett, Garrett Green is one of two big 12 quarterbacks we beat last year. We're all right. Oh, <laughs> We're okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's Parker, you're well on your way to, to the fair. number. He scored the game winning. It really wasn't Garrett. It was this random Hail Mary that the West Virginia secondary broke down on. Uh, Parker, you're well on your way to the number one We're overall. Back to the Hail Mary the again. <laughs> Very nice, Parker. You're going to get uh, oh, that. That's what we're saying. Yeah, tank for two or whatever. Right? Yeah, tank, tank, back yeah. yes. tank for two. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Borba locked on buffs. Is this a the, the whole like, did our team really win by that much or get beat that bad graphic came out this week? And Colorado Baylor was fairly evenly matched and comes down to a Hail Mary. Is Colorado actually good? Is this a flash in the pan? You got lucky and it's every year 14 and a half point underdogs against UCF this week. That within itself was crazy. Yeah, I don't know if we got they got lucky, right? I think they made yeah. enough plays at the right times. The defense stepped up when they needed to. They gave up, I think it was just seven um, second-half points. And realistically, it was special teams that really let them down. I think Cam could attest to this, right? They they gave up a kickoff I'm return for a 100-yard touchdown. They had a nice punt return that I don't think turned into anything, if I'm not mistaken. And then they had a uh, – Baylor, it was, had a missed kick. So a lot of special teams were a factor here. I think Colorado – at the end of the day, they showed that they're a team that could put up points when they need them, um, and their defense is much improved in the run, in the run game, which is going to be really interesting because UCF probably has the best run game and maybe college football. Um, so that's an interesting um, matchup there. But I don't know what UCF did to be favored by 15 points. Um, they almost got beat by TCU, but luckily for them, the Horned Frogs decided to take the second half off. And um, other than that, they haven't played anyone worth talking about. So really interested to see how the odds makers came to that um, that line there. 15 is insane. And TCU is not like Sonny Dykes went from national championship to hot seat and deservedly. So like, you can't put up, you can't allow 66 points, which might I say things were going really well in Fort Worth until he hired a guy with the last name Bryles. It's just, which, yeah. which you didn't have to do, by the way, there were other people who existed that could have <laughs> taken that job. And he said, Oh, the Bryles guy. And what do you have to say to get tossed? Oh, I yeah. mean, what's the, what's the question, magic man. word there? That, that it's like, okay, that's it. You're out. I mean, well, and, and how can we incorporate it into this episode? <laughs> Truly, is what we I'm can try. We, we can all try. get tossed. That's the. We would all. <laughs> well, then, how about him like, showboating in front of the fans? He yeah, he pulls the backside of his, his pants his, his down and fans. shows it to those everybody. Those were his old fans. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. 
Like, what are we? Maybe, maybe, yes. That's the question. If Dave, that's Aranda, that in him. if Dave Aranda had gotten tossed in the Colorado game, maybe the Bears win. Maybe in the end, it's a strategy <laughs> yeah. that could help a couple of the teams that are here. Uh, Chris Level, we'll keep it with you. Texas Tech, good now? Question mark. The North Texas game was good. You, you backed it up with a win against Arizona State that analytics would say you probably shouldn't have been in that you play this game 10 times. Arizona State would win six of them. But Texas Tech still came out on top on the scoreboard. Was this indicative of a Texas Tech squad that's dangerous and or back? Yeah, where's Richie at uh, this <laughs> week? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, like looking for I, – I will say uh, I think Arizona State was much better than I thought. Uh, I think Texas Tech is actually really good at home. Yeah. I don't know about road yet. We'll find that out when you go to Arizona in two weeks. But at home, yeah, you're going to be a handful as long as your running back is running for over 100 yards and your quarterback doesn't turn it over. A um, Texas Tech squad that I think with Cincinnati on the docket could move to four and one. And that's surprising based on the first two weeks. And shout out to Parker, because uh, I will tell you for what literally literally for what, Chris, why would we shout out Parker for anything? Cincinnati only has two big 12 wins Two, both of them right here. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Ordering the market. You know, he's a good team. (laughs) UNLV is a good team. Actually, I was gonna I was gonna mention that we're on this. I I have a new theory that they all stink because Oklahoma looked really bad in the, over the weekend too. We got we got a lot of problems. Um, I I could go on and on. Yeah, imagine say, imagine running off Dylan Gabriel and then and for Jackson Arnold who you bench in like the third game of the year or whatever. Yeah, it's gonna Dylan be like Dylan. a Heisman finalist. They're like, thank God, get him out of here. We get yeah, the guy should, or kid. They in. should have held on to General Booty. Oh, the UNL, the ULM giant. There's, General there's a joke there that Matt near Paul made that Joe might have missed, though. <laughs> Give it to us, Parker. Yeah, well, they're holding on to General Booty. We're, this is the PG-13 episode of all things. Um, I, was think, I was thinking General Booty could have a nice NIL deal with Taco Bell after this weekend, especially if he was... <laughs> Trans- yeah, <laughs> Jake just down that BV5 layer. He is General Booty. There, there's got to be another Booty sibling or cousin. How many of these are there, right? There's a bunch of these guys out there. How many booties are oh, there? Billion, right? How do we, well, how do we acquire David, them? Right? Yep. Bring them to John David. Oh, coming up this week, Slate in the Big 12 doesn't feature West Virginia, but it features pretty much everybody else in the show. So we'll get to Mountaineer Paul and his take on the bye week, as well as some of the bigger games like Oklahoma State, Kansas State, and Ken Houston upset Iowa. No, they cannot. Coming up on the Big 12 squad. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. You visit Prize Picks today for America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest way and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And all you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. One Caleb Williams passing yards gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss the deal on prize picks because it's gone when September ends. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. I love prize picks because I can use the I could use a little Caleb Williams and then a little like, uh, mm, I think that Jalen Hurts will have a rushing touchdown this week. Bam, prize picks. Yeah. Download the prize picks app today. Use code locked on college to get $50 instantly when you play $5. Code locked on college on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play five bucks. You won't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks, run your game. All right, let's make predictions for this week. Cody Stovall, you have maybe the biggest game on the docket. It's Oklahoma State traveling to Kansas State in a top 25 game. You just saw K-State get absolutely exposed at LES, but they're back home now. Can Oklahoma State go on the road and get it done after your team lost to Utah in the confines of Stillwater? I doubt it because I was saying all No, Cody, please be humble. I was worried (laughs) about uh, Isaac Wilson, right, Um, because of some of the things. Things I'd heard about Cam, and we suck something fierce like Hakua, Utah fierce when it comes to stopping a mobile quarterback. We cannot do it to save our lives. So now we got to go to Manhattan. And over the last 20 years, 86% of these games between O State and K State have come down to one score. 
I don't see it going good because I don't know if you watch the game, but we don't have an offensive coordinator. <laughs> or line. Offensive line's not there either. <laughs> uh, I'm not talking to you. You shot. <laughs> quarterback that's under 30. The defense is there. there. Five, he six years. Hey, we'll take Gary Bohannon and we will take the, the leftover Bryles, all right? If we can have him and, yeah. and then Adam, we got a choice. We got wow. a chance. You can also take, just for fun, that TCU defensive coordinator who's coaching yeah. Midway High mm-hmm. School in Texas now. Just He's just like, you know what? Light's too bright. I'm going to the high school. Hey, I, I record his coach's show every week. I'm abstaining from this. <laughs> You're Kirk Herbstreit on game day. You're calling the game. You're calling yeah. the game. <laughs> I'm <laughs> To this situation, he's the only one who picks up the phone and calls me by my name. So I, you will not get a bad word out you, of me. You do Gillespie's coaches show I, every I week. I do. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, the ESPN I don't know Texas whether he. It's like two minutes. I don't know whether he hit rock bottom or you're like on the way up. I don't know which way that's <laughs> hey, going. Hey, Midway's rolling right now. That's okay. all I'm going to say. Midway nice. coming off their first loss of the season, but. They're, they're not used to success this recent years in Midway. So <laughs> I just love the fact know. that Texas high school football program has a, you know, coaches show. So, hey, <laughs> they all do. I do seven uh, of them during the week. Hey, maybe, seven. Hey, maybe Utah needs one because, hey, Utah's looking like the best football state in the Big 12 through the first few weeks. I, hey, I'm just saying, uh, AJ. Okay, you got 30-year-olds playing quarterback. Like, chill out, bro. <laughs> hey, no, no. Utah has a 17-year-old playing quarterback right now. How the script has flipped. You know, Cam Rising could have, like, actively and trustfully held Isaac Wilson as a baby. Like, 11-year-old Cam Rising at church. Just like, oh, look, Zach Wilson's younger brother. And they're we on the same roster. Cam Rising is older than I am. We graduated That's, the same year. He is, um, like, I think we Bohannon's should find home. out, like, how many quarterback tandems in the Big 12 could one have babysat the other? I think you would get a surprising amount, actually. Yeah, he's in there as I well. mean, we got UCF too, right? So we could really, I mean, that's three already yeah, on top head. We count Bowman. Rhett's last not a Mormon. He's not going on a mission, so Bohannon hey, could have yeah. done that. You know hey, what I mean? He's a kid. Leave, leave the self-proclaimed BYG alone, okay? Yeah. BYG. It was it. great. The Jewish community was out and about at Lavelle Edwards taking pictures yeah. post-game with Jake Retzlaff. Hey, his his rabbi, there's a rabbi in Utah County. Oh, like, this friend. is great. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> yeah. So by the oh, way, yes. shout out to ch- shout out to Chime Zipple. He's the he's the rabbi of Utah County. So hey, <laughs> there you go. There we go. Jake, I, let's go a to you next on your game in Waco this week. Yeah. We have talked about from lotion bottles to BB five layers to Hawk Two Up. There is an 11 year old BYU fan listening right now who's got a lot of questions. I mean, oh, a no. lot of questions. <laughs> I'm telling you, oh, man. No. And Don't my Google. question Don't. Is, don't Google it. Don't Google any it. of them. Don't Google any of this. Yeah. Can Jake, can BYU win in Waco? Yeah, they can. Uh, the issue is, can they sustain offense? This is a running game that is going to be down LJ Martin. Uh, Kalani Satake already said that he's not playing this week. They're going to hold out until after the bye week to hopefully get him back. The good news is, is they got a guy by the name of Sione Moa, the fifth string running back coming into the season, broke out against Kansas State. And anybody who saw that final touchdown run, I think he shed the entire Kansas State uh, defense as he rumbled into the end zone. So they can sustain some offense. I think the defense will do its part. We'll just see if Jake Rutzloff and the rest of the BYU offense can can answer the bell. Cam, uh, Dave Aranda has at least one more week in Waco. Will he use it to win? I don't know. Sure. (laughs) Sure, man. I haven't even really thought about this game yet. I do know BYU struggles to run the ball. And we just faced the team that's worse in the conference at running the ball and still lost. So, uh, yes, Baylor can win. Baylor can win. And uh, I actually was most impressed by Colorado's defensive backfield last week because Baylor was looking at shots and there wasn't much open. Um, obviously, Travis Hunter is Travis Hunter, but a couple other guys on the field uh, played some pretty good games too in that defensive backfield. So I think if Baylor has the mindset to take some shots, I think it will help. But in a game between he- Baylor why you? I don't think there's any shots taken. Well, Cam, is he really that much on the hot seat? Like, like legitimately? Like, if he were to lo- lose this game, is that? I mean, would they would they do that? Like in the Chris, next couple weeks? This is a good question. This is a good question. I've actually I addressed it on Locked On Baylor Wednesday's episode. See, uh, because RG three, RG three put out this like impassioned defense of like yeah. you can't fire Dave Aranda. What? And I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh. He wasn't any more fired than he was five days ago. Like, I don't think that loss really did anything. I mean, this is a guy who just lasted a three and nine year. They're not firing him after they fall to two and two. So it's one of those where you look at and you're like, how does a coach get through this? But like, I don't think that's being determined 
it this month or next month or maybe even the month after. They were one and four. Maybe that's a different story. But no, I don't think he's fired after this game. And I think it's pro- yeah. knowing Baylor, it's going to happen at the end of the season, whatever the decision. I've got some hope for you, Cam. Yeah. BYU in their last 14 day games. You know what their record is? Two and 12. There you go. So BYU, there's yeah, something maybe I have researched during the day and at night. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Come oh yeah, got, we're gonna we're gonna bring the period. daytime to you, man. We are going to bring the sun, brother. <laughs> Eleven a.m. Get ready for a little ten a.m. Mountain time. We're using the day game and the circadian rhythm to our advantage. I cannot <laughs> wait for this. They, they got to uh, wait for Texas State season to finish before they can hire their next coach. G.J. Right? Kinney. G.J. Cool. Kinney. It's crazy we're talking about the future TCU coach as if he would go to Baylor. But <laughs> there's all that, that would be peak Baylor. Kinney goes that there and brings great. them back. Colorado this week gets UCF Borba. Are you going to win as 15-point underdogs in Orlando? Um, I don't think so. I think yeah. Colorado has a tough matchup here. Um, realistically, that if they didn't have KJ Jefferson, I would like their odds a little bit better. Um, but Colorado has struggled against quarterbacks who can run, and he's often been compared to a poor man's version of Cam Newton. And so he's kind of a, a, a dynamic threat. And they also happen to have RJ Harvey, who is probably the best running back in the Big 12 right now. And so it'll be a really true test for Colorado's run defense. They have improved a lot. Last year, they were the worst in college football. This year, they're not as bad. They're actually serviceable, which is a very big step up for them. Um, but this is going to be a really, really tough matchup for them. And I still don't get where the 15 points come from. But if they do win, that's where Deion Sanders wants to recruit from. So he will have a – there's going to be a lot of players taking random visits to UCF this weekend. I can tell you that. Okay, yeah. can, I, can I find out how UCF got Colorado, BYU, and Utah to have to go to Orlando this year? Like, mm-hmm. what do they what do they do to the, the scheduling to get all four of the mountain? It's the mouse man in Orlando. It's the mouse, the mouse. mouse did it. <laughs> did love the uh, the Cam, hey. poor man's Cam Newton. It's like I, I would say that KJ Jefferson is Cam Newton. If Cam Newton's arm, right arm, was severed off in a horrific accident, then yes, yes, <laughs> one in the same. Uh, Mountaineer Paul, you got a bye Ooh. week. Any anything you can do to win the bye week, you, your team could use it. We've got Garrett Green. <laughs> yeah i think we can do a couple things for sure uh we need to heal up you know i don't know if anybody got a chance to see that kansas game at all we had uh probably six or seven injuries in the span of 10 minutes le- legitimately um they none of them were really bad we did have one guy go out on a stretcher couldn't feel anything that was a really scary moment so our, our, we really just need to heal. Nobody's played a tougher schedule than us, really, to start the year. Pitt's way better than we thought they were going to be. Penn State is a tough out, right, any day of the week. We played an Albany team that was in the FCS final last year, really tough FCS out. And then Kansas came in with a really good defense, physical team, two really good corners. So we were really – we've been beaten up. So we really need this. So I think it, it just healing up on the bye week is going to be what the Mountaineers need to do. And we're excited about that. And how do we go down 10 at Pitt to lose the game to, or or up 10 at Pitt to lose the game down 11 against Kansas to win the game? I don't know. Hopefully that goes back to normal this coming week. West Virginia with a chance to reset. Um, JT Westersell, 30 seconds, because I mean, it's Arizona, but they don't seem to be as dangerous as we once thought. Will Utah struggle at all? I don't think I don't think this is going to end up being too much of a game. I think Eric, going into the yard was more scared of this matchup than it turned out being. But like you mentioned, I mean, Arizona nearly lost to Northern Arizona. So this mm-hmm. is a Utah team. Jake mentioned BYU's record in day games. Utah's lost one true home game since 2019. Mm-hmm. That was to mm-hmm. Bo Oregon's team last year. This Arizona team is Fafita and McMillan. Kyle Winningham and this Utah defense are going to be fired up. They're going to shut this team down. Also, I know we're giving Harvey his love. Do you guys know Makai Bernard, Utah's running back, actually leads the Big 12 in rushing yards? I know I'm very popular. Popular side. I had to throw that out there just to just to. There he is. Is he the one who flipped off the fans? I thought that was kind of funny, actually. <laughs> well, here's the whoever thing. was on the exercise bike. Yeah. Hey, well, <laughs> here's the thing, JT. Arizona, they ran it up on Utah last year, and Kyle Whitting yes, has been very, he's made very thinly veiled, essentially threats that he's going to run it up on Arizona given the opportunity. That can make it a little more fun. He, of he could not hide his smile about talking about how well Kansas State ran the ball on Arizona. He is so excited to really try and take it to the Wildcats, even though a lot of the pieces obviously from that team and those decisions aren't even there. Utah does not care. 
Dorian Singer's going deep with like 30 seconds to go. I'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Utah football has recently announced a matchup in 2029 with Weber State. Cam Rising is questionable with an abdominal strain. So then you guys know. Just hey, that will be. Weber State will be in the Pac 12 by then. So that might not <laughs> be a bad match. <laughs> Honestly, if things keep going the way they are, Baylor and Houston will join them. And that will be a very fun reunion with, out there. With that same Northern Arizona team we just mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Parker Ainsworth. Uh, Tyler Jackson. 30 seconds for you. Houston hosts Iowa State. Is there literally anything you can do? So I will say Houston wants to do the kinds of things that Iowa does well, and Iowa gave Iowa State all they could handle. Um, the difference, I think, is that Iowa might have five pro offensive linemen and we might have one. And I, and I think that that's a stark difference. But I do think, like, if Styles make fights, they want to do the kinds of things that have given Iowa State problems. It's a 13-and-a-half point uh, underdog right now. It feels like a lot of points for a Cabello scoring game. Yeah. What's First an level, NFL offensive um, lineman feel like, by the way? Oh. We had one last year, too, right? <laughs> a couple of these. I will say, can I get – so we Please. beat Baylor a year ago and yeah. still felt so bad about it we fired our coach, and you brought Aranda back. What did you expect was going to happen? Like, like, yeah, I get that. Uh, I, don't I, worry, Dick Parker. I think Mac Rhodes might get uh, Chris Pesmond at the end of this year as well. There's a chance that uh, – <laughs> We that was fired a, that him, was, too. We fired him too that was a Mac Rhodes inside job he wanted to make the old job look good that's I get that that's that's classy that's respect right Chris there. I yeah. do yeah. think Pesman and Rhodes team. might be are, are their friends and they might be sharing a, a meal together soon with their camaraderie and something that will be very similar amongst the two Chris Level Texas Tech Cincinnati you're only a three-point favorite 30 seconds will the Red Raiders win the Tommy Tuberville Bowl, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ch- Tommy Chili, Tuberville, the Alabama. Yeah, Chili Center? doesn't belong on spaghetti. Okay, Chili doesn't belong on spaghetti, so that's one. Um, oh, uh, shout out to uh, Houston for providing Cincinnati to, uh, the welcome mat to the uh, uh, to the Big Twelve with some conference wins. But yeah, I, they haven't even played a game really outside of their city yet. Uh, I think this is a night game; it's sold out. Uh, they are very good at running back. I think uh, Soresby has been better than they would have thought. They've yeah. installed the Iowa State defensive scheme, but I just think it's too much Texas Tech at home. So I would uh, I would lay the three and take the Red Raiders. That is going to do it for the longest, but probably the most entertaining and maybe raunchiest. Let's see how much I have to edit out of this one. <laughs> Big 12 Squad episode. Follow and subscribe to your favorite Big 12 Squad show. We'll be covering your favorite team every day throughout the season. And don't forget, I'll have you covered on the entire conference every day with Locked On Big 12. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This has been the Dose Grande Squad.